when you're doing what you do with full focus and intensity better than anybody could ever do it, you could get away with being a bad guy. And my dad knows that. Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot, this morning I was watching your lecture on testosterone optimization. You rambled a bit about a nice guy and basically saying that nice, that men should stop being nice, that we should become bad guys. <laughs> I could confidently say that I'm not a nice guy anymore, but I definitely was one. But I feel like I still sometimes have to be that nice guy because other people cannot handle the bad guy. I work at a grocery store and definitely have to be a nice guy most of the time. Because for example, when a customer breaks something, they will start whining when I'll say to them that they did something stupid and they have to clean it up themselves. <laughs> Instead, I have to say, oh, that can happen to anyone. Let me clean it up for you. But it does not end with the customers. Even colleagues or some family members would not be able to handle the bad guy. My question is, where do I draw the line? You know, Rob, you remind your question reminds me of my father. My father is the one that, that reminds me and tells me and, and, and reminds us that he is a bad guy. And even when I was a kid, it would be like situations where we needed to be disciplined or he had to step up and say something that wasn't popular or wasn't pleasing. He would just accept that he's a bad guy and he, start, he would say it. He said, I'm the bad guy. He sounded almost like Scarface in the movie. He would say, that's it. I'll be the bad guy. I don't care. I'm the bad guy. You don't have to like me. He would say it even to us as, as his children. He says, I don't care if you don't like me. I'm the bad guy. But it's my responsibility to, to do X, Y, and Z. So hate me if you want. I'll just be the bad guy. My dad took on the role of villain, right? My dad was a willful villain, when I was a kid growing up. And to this day, that's the way my dad operates. At his job, my dad fixes cars. He's, he's gonna be 70 years old. And my dad still fixes cars. He still works every day. And at his job, he's the bad guy. His coworkers, a lot of them hate him. The customers, a lot of them hate him. There's about 50% of people that cannot stand my father. But there's about 50% of the people that love my father so much because he's so real, right? You either, is one of these guys, my dad's like, Luke, he's, he's, he's not lukewarm. He's either hot or cold. One of these situations where you either hate him or you love him. And it's for the same reason. You either, you, if you love him, it's because of the same reason why these people hate him, Right? Because he's just so real and he's just so willing to be a bad guy. Now, here, there's, a, there's a secret to that. There's a secret to why my father can be a bad guy and play the bad guy role and to, and to, and to even call himself a bad guy and to be hated by certain people. It's because he's a master at what he does. When you're the best at what you're doing, when you're amazing at what you do, when you're doing what you do with full focus and intensity better than anybody could ever do it, you could get away with being a bad guy. And my dad knows that. And he says that all the time. He says, you know why I could get away with being like that? Because I'm the best. And he'll say it. My dad will straight up say it. He says, the reason why I can get away with Let me tell you a story what my dad did at his job one day. This is a funny. He tells me a whole lot of funny stories that he does as a bad guy. He's, he's definitely a villain. Um, so my dad's always complaining about how the guys at his job are fat. <laughs> you know, he's like, these guys are disgusting. He's just, they're so fat and sloppy and people will come, they will come with like the, uh, you know, they'll bring pizzas and donuts for the, for the guys in the shop and they're eating it. And my dad was just like, you know, he's disgusted by them. He's like, these guys are just fat slobs and nasty. So one day, uh, the boss's daughter, I guess the guy that owns the shop, right? Uh, his daughter comes in, little girl, maybe she's like 10, 12 years old, comes in with a box of donuts. I guess, you know, maybe it was a special day or something. And she's walking around, with, and the mother's there too. And they're walking around, they're passing, the, you know, they're passing donuts around, right? And my dad, my dad sees them passing the donuts around, and he's like, you know, he's, he's, he, he's pissed off already. He's like, these guys are so fat and nasty. They don't need to be eating no damn donuts. And I can, see, I can hear him, you know, in my mind, like I can hear him probably talking to himself. What the hell is she doing here with these donuts? These people are so stupid. Why are they eating the donuts? Look at that fat guy eating his damn donuts. And when it got to him, a little girl came to him and was like offering him the donuts. You know what my dad did? <laughs>
He took the box of donuts, smashed it, and shoved it in his garbage can. <laughs> Who does that? Who does that but a villain? Who does that? But you know why he could do that? And he knows why he could do that? Because my dad produces the fastest and, and does the best job. My dad, the boss at the job told my dad that he makes more money for, my, for his company than any guy that's ever worked for him because my dad's a fucking master. He's so good at what he did. Yeah, they were pissed off, Matt. <laughs> they were really pissed off, but they didn't get rid of him. They didn't, and, and if they fired him, my dad wouldn't care either. He said, well, that's fine. I'll go somewhere else. And that's what he does. He just, he'll just go somewhere else. And he'll go somewhere else, and you know what's going to happen? They're going to love him for a little while until they realize what kind of guy he is. And then they realize, oh, don't mess with this guy. He's a bad guy. He's a villain. So I know that's not necessarily answering your question. I don't have, I'm not my dad. My dad's more alpha than me. <laughs> I can't be that kind of a bad, like I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't grab the donuts from the little girl and stuff it in the garbage, <laughs> garbage can. My dad does that. And I, I take a lot of lessons from the way my dad is because my dad's totally toxic. Uh, as, you know, toxic masculinity, they, they like to say. And I see how he operates and how he thinks and how he, you know, how he gets away with the things that he does. And this whole idea, it, when I talk about it in the, um, in the course, when I say be a bad guy, all I'm really referring to is bringing some balance to our incredibly imbalanced world where we're not just nice, we're toxically nice. It's, just, it's not just nice the way most guys are. Most guys aren't nice. Nice guys aren't actually nice guys. Nice guys are angry guys on the inside, suppressing their emotions, putting a smile on their face while they're about to die from a heart attack, telling somebody something nice that they didn't really want to say. Being Listen, and this is my dad's whole thing about being a nice guy. He says, I can't be fake. My dad is a nice guy. My dad's a really nice guy. My mom was bragging about him the other day because um, we, they went to Home Depot and there was an old man there and they was trying to get some lumber, but the old man was too weak to get the lumber. And my dad was like, hey, let me, watch out. Let me help you out. My dad took the lumber and he brought it down for the, you know, it was an old crippled guy. I don't know what he was doing with the lumber, but my dad went and he took the guy lumber down and he, and he said, look, hey, don't worry about it. I, you know, I have this afternoon. I got a little bit of time. I'll push because to push the lumber is pretty hard, too. Right? You got to push it. You got to put it on that cart. You got to push it. You've been to Home Depot. Or you got a whole lot of lumber on one of those things. They're wobbly and shit. My dad went and shopped with this old man the whole day. My dad's a nice guy, but he's a bad guy. The point is, he's just being real. If he wants to be nice, he's going to be so nice that he's going to rock your teeth. Your teeth are going to rot. He's so sweet. If it calls for it, if you deserve it, if it's the right time and the right place and it's in his heart, he's going to be a nice guy. He's going to be the nicest guy you ever met. But if he's not being nice, he's going to be bad. He's going to be real bad and you're going to hate him. And that's how he gets away with it. You say, where do I draw the line? You draw the line. Your line is your line. You could be a nice guy today because I want to be a nice guy. I'm just feeling like a nice guy. I'm feeling like going out of my way. And like I said, when my dad's a nice guy, he goes out of his way. He's extra nice. Extra nice. The kind of nice that people are like, what is with this guy? Why is he, so, why is he being so nice? Because he wants to be nice because it's a legit opportunity to be nice. It makes sense for him to be nice. And so he's being nice. So where's the line then? <whistles> Far away. But if it's something that irritates him, something that pisses him off, and nothing pisses my dad off more than laziness and sloth. And that's why he gets in so many fights at his job, because they're all lazy and slothful. That line is right here. That line is right at the tip of his toes. And he's like, don't cross that line. Do not cross that line with me, because I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to give you it straight. I'm not going to sugarcoat nothing. And if you're a flat slob and you're passing me donuts, I'm going to shove that shit in the garbage. Right? <laughs> But I think that what, what's required is a strong sense of self to be that way. You asking me where to draw the line basically is, is trying to give me, have me give you an objective, an objective line. Like, if it's this, the line is here. If it's that, the line is here. No, you can't do that. When you, when you are like my father, right, and he's just so in tune with himself, and he's, 
I, I don't know anybody else like him. Like he's just so in tune with himself and with the with the with the situation and the environment and the circumstances that he decides in that very moment you don't know what kind of Edmund you're gonna get. You don't know and it, and and he doesn't hold any grudges. He could be real mean to you. He could be you know because you deserve it and in his mind you deserve it. When you he's being mean to you is because look you're stupid. Like he can't stand stupidity. Like you're being stupid right now. So I'm gonna tell you the way it is. But he could literally turn around a few hours later and be real nice to you. Hey, yeah, I see you trying. I see you trying. Okay, yeah. let me give you a hand. And he'll give you a hand. It's really, I don't want to say subjective because then we start getting into the realm of my truth and the whole thing of, uh, you know, the wishy-washy, lukewarm, gray world that we live in where nothing is objective. Everything is whatever I feel like. What I'm, ta what I'm really talking about is having a level of responsiveness Truly know that's what a that's a real alpha male way to be is to be truly responsive, right? Truly responsive, meaning take the situation as it is and deal with it at that moment, right? That person who uh, you know you say you say something nice to them after they did something stupid, maybe maybe you really genuinely want to help them, right? Hey, it looks like you did something stupid there. <laughs> Look, don't worry. I've done stupid things before. Let me clean it up for you. Have a nice day, right? You don't tell, and one of the things my dad, because he's so real, he doesn't, he won't lie to you. He's not going to say, this is one of his funniest lines. He goes, do you want me to tell you you did a good job? Right? Like if you do something stupid and you resent the fact that he's telling you you did something stupid, he goes like this. Well, you want me to tell you you did a good job? Fine. You did a good job. You did a great job, my son. He'll do that. He'll mock you. He'll be like, oh, you did a great job, my son. Congratulations. That's a great thing you did. You want me to tell you that? Good, I'll tell you that. But the fact is, it was stupid. You did something stupid. So you might even just tell them, hey, that was pretty stupid. No worries. I'll clean it up for you. Right? I know you did something stupid. I'm not going to pretend like you didn't do something stupid. You legitimately did something stupid. I know you did something stupid. You know you did something stupid. But I'm going to help you out here now anyway. Right? I'll help you out here anyway. Don't do it next time, though. And you can even do it with a smile on. Just don't do it next time. <laughs> right but it's about being responsive it's about being being able to pick up the ball where it lies and you got to deal with it in that moment right so that line you got to draw that line you got to draw that line from time to time and you got to understand dude so hope that helps done yo it's your bro elliot i hope you enjoyed that video if you did you ought to know that it was a clip from the coaching sessions that i have every week with my king transformation students where among other things, we get together for about four or five hours a week. And we talk all things related to becoming kings in our lives in fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G. Me and my team will get back to the details and see if you qualify to join us. Hope to see you at our next meeting. Done.